Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nikki LaRose. If you're new here, I'm a celebrity makeup artist based in Los Angeles. And in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you a step-by-step -step on how to color correct and conceal dark circles under your eyes. So if you're one of the many people that have reached out to me personally and asked me to do this video, this is for you. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. As you can see, I have no face makeup on. I do have my brows on per usual, and I do have a little bit of lipstick on or a lot of, bit of lipstick on. But anyway, that's beside the point. My skin is prepped, like my actual face is prepped, but I left my under eye because I wanna show the first step in this process, which would be hydration. So we're gonna make sure we hydrate and moisturize our under eyes before we go in with any color correctors, concealers, powders, because Let's face it, it's already challenging enough having dark circles under our eyes. But on top of it, if you also have dry dark circles, that's just, that's even harder to deal with. So make sure you don't skip moisturizing your under eyes before you go in with these following steps. So to start, I'll be using a little bit of the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Eye Base. This is an old school eye moisturizer, like eye cream. It's been on the market for a really long time. It's a really great, like tried and true product, especially if you're a makeup artist. This is like one of those staples that I see in so many different makeup artist kits. It's a great moisturizer. So anyway, not to go on too long about this product, but I will say it's a very thick, like very rich, um, just like it says, it's like an enriched vitamin eye base. It is very thick. So. I can't stress enough the importance of not using too much of any of your, you don't have to use this moisturizer. It could be any moisturizer under your eye. I'm just using this one because I know how it performs underneath makeup and that's also very important, but I can't stress enough the importance of not overdoing it. And so the reason for that is if you put just too much eye cream under your eye, it will never fully absorb and when you go and you put your color corrector and then you're after that, your concealer on top, you're adding all these additional layers and it's just gonna end up creasing like crazy. And I'm gonna press it in with my fingertip. I'm not gonna rub aggressively, even though I want to because that would get the job done so much faster. I'm going to stick to pressing this and patting it into my under eye. That way I'm not tugging too hard. I'm not causing, you know, my skin under my eyes to wrinkle. You want to be, you know, obviously very gentle with this area. This is the thinnest skin on your entire face. So make sure you treat it like that and make sure you have that in mind when you're applying anything under your eye. Even if it's like blending eyeshadow on your bottom lash line, you want to keep in mind that this skin is incredibly thin, like paper thin. So my point is you can't go in and apply as much pressure to this area as you would with the rest of your face. I'm gonna move on to my other side. And just for reference too, this is the amount I'm gonna be using. That's it. It's not even a pea size. It's not even like, it's like a an eighth of a pea size amount. It's tiny. So same thing. I'm gonna really just press it under my eye. And just another tip too, if you are you know, questioning like which finger you should use to apply an eye cream or just eye products in general. I know I'm using my middle finger, but typically it's suggested that you use your ring finger because going back to that same point about like your under eyes skin being very thin and very delicate and very prone to wrinkling and, uh, you know, premature aging and things like that. The reason why they suggest your ring finger is because this is supposed to be the weakest finger that we have. And now just checking this eye, this side that we already applied the cream, it's already dried down and I can tell it's already absorbed. So now I'm actually ready to just go straight into our color corrector. So I will be honest, like for myself personally, I have really dark circles under my eyes. I mean, they're dark to me. You might be at home watching them and, and thinking like they're not that dark. To me, I feel like they're really dark and they, I feel like they stand out a lot. But even with that said, there's not, it, it's not often that I choose to do a color corrector and then my concealer and then set it because just generally speaking, I don't take the time to do that. It just, it takes more time. That's just the reality. But if I really wanna look 
perfect under my eye and flawless. I make sure that I do use a color corrector and the one that I like personally, which is the one I'm gonna show you guys on in this tutorial, is from NARS. It's the Radiant Creamy Color Corrector. This is in the shade medium. They have a whole set of different shades ranging from light to deep dark. This one works best for my pigmentation. Now I'm gonna take a little bit on the top of my hand and just like with the eye cream, less is more. You don't need to go, despite what you see probably on Instagram or on TikTok or even on YouTube from what I've seen as well, you do not need to go crazy with the color corrector. Less is so, so much more than packing on a ton of this stuff because the more you put on, the more it's gonna end up blending into the concealer or the foundation you put on top of it and the harder it's going to be to actually work with it. I'm gonna tap into that color corrector. With color correctors, it is much easier to blend them and apply them to your skin with a fingertip or a sponge. So before I let this dry down too much, I'm gonna tap this in. Just where I showed you, I had the darkest pigmentation. So just around here, and it is feathered down a little bit, which is good because by bringing it down just ever, like so, so slightly, you can see I have like a visible dent where like my cheek ends and the hollow of my under eye begins. And there's an obvious line that is created when those two worlds collide. And so if I bring down my color corrector just a hint over that spot, like where they meet up, it's gonna help to camouflage that, that inevitable shadow that that area has. Taking a little bit more I'm gonna bring this right here. I also personally have a lot of dark pigmentation literally directly under my bottom lash line, like along my bottom lash line. It almost just looks like I have permanent like eyeshadow underneath my bottom lash line, but I just, I have really dark I just have a lot of darkness right there specifically. And I could take a little bit more of this color corrector and bring it way, way up into my lash line. But I'm gonna be honest, less is so more, especially when you're considering this area right here. So I don't typically put it all the way up towards my lash line. I find that if I just do my concealer as usual, it's enough to balance out that area. And also, let's be real, I always have eyeshadow on my bottom lash line, so. I don't really go through the hassle of color correcting that area when I know in reality, I'm gonna just throw a dark or a medium shade of shadow underneath there anyway. So there's no point. Okay, moving on to this eye. Same thing. Bring it down ever so slightly to cover up that line of where my cheek ends and the hollow of my under eye begins just to kind of camouflage it. Another reason why I like this color corrector too, I don't know if I said this, but it's very thin and it's very easy to work with because it is so thin. So if you're someone who is maybe more intimidated by like those heavy color correctors, even like the MAC ones that I showed you guys, those are a little bit more difficult to work with if you're a beginner because they are so thick and you have to work a little extra hard to blend them and to set them properly so they don't crease. So this is just a great option for so, so many people because it is so thin. It doesn't add like a really thick heaviness to wh whichever area of your face you're color correcting, um, which again, is just really important under your eye because the more thick products you apply under your eye, there's more of a chance that it's going to crease throughout the day. Okay, so now that our color corrector is on, and since this is such a thin formula, and also because I 
I just can't stress enough. I use such a thin amount of it. I don't have to wait for a long time for this to dry down because you wouldn't want to go in immediately after this is applied while it's still wet with another wet product. Because if you put wet on top of wet, they're going to mix together and then you're going to get a really muddied effect with your concealer. So I don't have to worry about that. This is nice and dried down to the touch. So now I'm going to go in with my actual concealer. So moving on to concealer, you guys will definitely recognize this one. It's one of my favorites, but for a great reason, it's the Jouer Essential High Coverage Liquid Concealer. And I'll be honest, I, when I was pulling the products for this tutorial, I wanted to try to show you guys a different formula as far as concealers go that I haven't shown a bunch of times already on my channel. But when I really need my under eyes to look flawless and bright and covered and corrected and all those things, this is just truthfully what I know is going to work the best and what's going to just not let me down. And I know I've used this concealer in so many of my other tutorials, but there's a reason why. It's just a great, true, full coverage concealer. And that's exactly what you need when you're, when you're putting it on top of a color corrector. You can't use a thinner, more lightweight, more natural type of concealer on top of a color correcting color. It just won't work. It's not gonna cover it. It's not gonna do the right thing. It's not going to, you'll be able to see that color corrector underneath if that makes sense. So that's another reason why I chose that once again. So I'm gonna focus on the inner part of my under eye first and then tap it in. Now, this is normally my concealer shade when I have like the rest of my foundation on, but this is where it's tricky showing you guys this these steps without any other base or like foundation products on because my face naturally is so fair compared to the rest of my body. So now I'm gonna layer just a touch of the shade Custard on top in the same two spots. So I'm gonna pop it right here. I'm gonna pop it right in the very inner part of, like basically kind of like close to my tear duct. And this is gonna be like our, our brightening concealer shade. So the one underneath the wheat one is, is more of like the neutral shade. This one's gonna help to just brighten that area even more. This is not gonna be necessary for everyone, but for me, I just need like a touch more brightening. Same beauty sponge. I'm gonna tap that in. And so the reason why I'm choosing to use a damp beauty sponge and to tap that product in rather than taking a brush and blending it, it's a very valid reason why. So if I were to use a brush I'd have to be pretty careful not to disrupt that color corrector that's underneath my concealer. And sometimes if you're, you know, if you're not super careful and you're blending this on top with a brush, it can definitely, it could definitely lift up that product and like I said, disrupt it. So by tapping it in and pressing that concealer on top of it, it's just going to ensure that it's going to look more flawless. We're not going to disrupt that color corrector underneath. And honestly, it's just really easy too. Like it's a really easy, quick, efficient way of doing this. And then whatever's left over in my sponge, I'm just going to lightly blend into the rest of my cheekbone. Okay, so we're going to let this side hang out for a bit while we finish up this eye. Going back to the Wheat Concealer, that first shade, same thing, we're just gonna repeat what we have on this eye, on this eye. 
So now before I powder my under eye, I'm going to go in one more time with that same damp beauty sponge. I just make sure no creasing has happened since I have been talking a lot and not setting my concealer. This is so crucial to make sure you do before you, you know, go in with your powder because like I've said before, if you have creases and you're putting powder on top of it, you're just, you're literally setting those creases into your under eye so they don't move and you don't want that. You want the opposite. So you wanna make sure you set your under eye concealer so it doesn't crease. So whatever you have going into setting powder is what you're going to set into your skin. So if you have creases that have happened, you're just gonna set them into place and you don't want that. This is the Huda Beauty. These are the mini sizes. They make a full size, obviously, but I love these little mini sizes. These are her loose setting powders. This is the Pound Cake shade. And this is just a great, very neutral shade for under your eye specifically. It's not too yellow, which is something I really can't stand as a makeup artist. I really don't, like for, for my skin tone, for example, I don't recommend you go with a shade of powder that's too yellow. If you're deeper, that's going to work for your skin tone. Amazing for brightening. But if you're my shade or lighter, Try to avoid powders, like setting powders that are more on like the yellow side because it will just make your under eye look, it will take away that brightness. It's, it's just, it's tricky. So I'm gonna take some of this in the palm of my hand and I'm going to use the same damp beauty sponge. And I'm just going to work that on to my beauty sponge. And now I'm going to press this under my eye. And you really have to look far up. Oh, I do anyway. I have to look way up just so I can really get in to under my eye and really push that powder under my eye. If you're just looking straight ahead and you're trying to get like a really smooth under eye, you can't, you're not gonna get it. Like you have to look way, way, way up because when you look, the further you look up, the more it stretches your under eye skin that sounds bad, but it's what you kind of need to do in order to get a really smooth powder application under your eye. So if I was just looking straight ahead, my natural like resting face, like not looking up, my resting face has some like visible lines. So by looking up, I'm stretching those fine lines under my, under my eye, like my skin, and it's allowing me to really get in there with this small amount of pressed powder and set that area so it looks really nice and smooth. And then bring it all the way into the tear duct and just along the side of my nose and bring it down just a little bit onto my cheekbone because since I don't have makeup on the rest of my skin, I want to make sure this blends and doesn't look super crazy and obvious that I only have concealer and product under my eye and not on the rest of my face. Okay, so our under eyes are set. They're done. Like they're concealed, well, they're moisturized, they're color corrected, they're concealed, and then they're set with powder and we're we're done, we're ready to go. So this is the finished look. These are my best and favorite tips and techniques on how to properly hydrate, color correct, conceal, set your under eye dark circles. I really hope you guys find this video super helpful. If you do, if you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'll definitely try to get back to you on whatever questions you might have. Or if you have any other different techniques that you love, that you've tried and you think are just the best that I didn't feature, let me know those as well. I would love to hear from you guys. Um, don't forget to follow me on Instagram. I'm Makeup by Nikki LaRose and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.